Frozen have done it again. This is one brand you can't accuse of cutting corners, in fact it's the opposite. In previous versions of printers, they've added features beyond anything that people would reasonably even want, like the camera in the Mighty 8K. No, I won't let them live that mistake down anytime soon, but hey, at least they tried something and delivered a solid printer. And they've done it again here. By stripping out much of the more expensive components from their Mega 8K, they've reduced the cost, but I would be very wrong if I said this were cheaper, because in terms of quality, this thing is anything but cheap. This is the highest quality, best built, large format LCD printer from a highly trusted brand. And I'm Ross, the lowest quality, poorest built reviewer from Fohammer Videos. Right, those of you who've watched my other videos are sick of me making this point. Because when I talk about print resolution, in every video to the point where it's already beyond ad nauseum, I'm sorry, but I'll get it out of the way first in this one. The reason I bring it up is because of printers like the Mega 8K, and it's the Mega 8K specifically that fuels me constantly giving this explanation. I've seen so many people shocked to find that the print quality of the Mega 8K is not as sharp or as detailed as the Mini 8K. And that's because the 8K we're talking about refers to a fixed number of pixels on the X and Y axis. It's not the same as pixels per inch. You get a bigger screen that has an 8K resolution and the pixels in it are bigger than a smaller screen that's also 8K. So here, in this model, the pixels are 43 microns, and this is because that 8K resolution is stretched over a 15-inch screen with a build area of 330 by 185 millimeters. Which means, in terms of print quality and sharpness, this printer is more comparable to prints from the likes of the Sonic Mini 4K with its 35 micron pixels. But honestly, it's not even that good. It's actually closer to, but not quite as poor, as the print quality of a 6 inch 2K printer. And the only one of those I've ever reviewed was the GTEC Alcade. Well, I also reviewed the old Anycubic Photon Mono S, but that was a written review on my website which nobody really read. Anyway, the point is, don't expect that this 8K printer's quality is directly comparable to all other 8K printers. You need to compare pixel sizes of printers. But, and I'll make this following point again later in the video, are you honestly looking at a printer of this size to print small things? And maybe you are, maybe for batch production of smaller models. And if you are, good, I've done those tests. But first, let me do the necessary review things about the features and functionality of this amazing printer. So as we know, this is on the larger side of LCD 3D printers. And as mentioned, there's that 15 inch screen. The build area is 330 by 185 millimeters. And this does come with a screen protector pre-installed, which is an absolute blessing. Now the height is 30 millimeters, which is a 10 centimeter reduction from the original Mega 8K. But that is the only place where I would say this unit is in any way lesser than that original model. And you need to decide for yourself if this difference really matters. When it comes to external dimensions, you aren't saving much over that original Mega 8K wardrobe either. Three millimeters in width, two centimeters in depth, and 11 centimeters in height. But let's be honest, this is a far sexier printer than that old industrial looking machine. And with this gorgeous color scheme, I can once again crack out my Lego Blacktron models as a visual comparison. And I understand that this is a polarizing colorway, but personally, I love it. Now with this, instead of a lid or doors that open like the old Mega 8K, you get a flip up and over lid. The hinges are really strong, so this will hold the lid at any position you leave it in. And they are low on the chassis too, so you don't need to worry about too much extra height this may take up if you were to mount this in a rack. But one thing you need to be aware of is that this does stick out pretty far off the back of the unit when fully opened, so you will need to situate it in a place with a good distance from the wall. Unboxing this was only slightly hard because, well, it's heavy. I had to hold the box between my feet as I lifted this 26 kilogram unit out of the box. It may be a better idea to open both sides of the box and slide it out sideways or get some help when doing it. But packaging wise, this was incredible with everything neatly and obviously laid out. And I should mention that Frozen also sent me their new massive wash and cure stations, but I struggled to fit all three of these items on one desk. I'm going to cover these devices in a separate video, but honestly, they are awesome and pair nicely with the printer. The washer is incredibly powerful with dual fans and the curing station is very large and it's a tough unit. 
But back to the printer then. So this comes with a huge VAT, and that VAT is pre-installed with ACF release film. I've said before that this stuff doesn't last as long as PFA, and the frosty texture reduces the quality of print surfaces. But if you're getting a printer of this size to print big things, that surface quality reduction hardly even matters. And also, the VAT's got two handles on it, but honestly, I find these far too narrow for my average size fingers to get a decent grip of. And the edges, well, they're pretty sharp too. I also find that the placement of these puts them in the way of easily tightening the VAT knobs. They aren't being cheap here because these are well machined, it's decent material and suit the style of the printer, but they just aren't that useful. So it is great that you can take them off. And then we've got the build plate. And the great thing about this is that I don't even need to talk about the leveling mechanism for this printer because they come perfectly level from the factory. If for some reason you need to adjust it, not that I think you ever would with this mechanism, but you can watch the video from Frozen themselves. Now, this does look a little bit different to other build plates because of those holes. And they're there to allow a more even resin flow during prints. This is a large printer and a large vat. You need these in order to get resin back to where it should be and settled before curing the next layers. If the layer starts curing whilst resin is still flowing off the plate, it would be moving in the vat and potentially ruining layers in the prints. So these are a really useful thing. But with the top of the plate having no taper, you'll finish every print with a load of resin still on the surface. And where you've had the bases of your models cured on the opposite side, resin will actually fill these holes with nowhere to go but on your desk as you remove the models. Though some of this minor quirk can be alleviated as the Z-Arm has a hook built in which you can use to attach the vat to and allow resin to run off. But this is only helpful with short models like miniatures. Anything larger, like this Katana model by Blackforge Games, which takes up just over half the build height, and you've got parts sticking out of the side of the printer and touching the screen. Honestly, most of the time I never use this hook, and instead I just scrape the resin off with a plastic scraper and sacrifice the resin that's filled the holes when getting parts off on my desk. Don't get me wrong, this hook and these holes are useful features, they just have some caveats to know about when using them. Now when I was looking at the ports on this machine, I noticed the obvious placement of USB on the front and power on the back right corner. Perfect. But I also noticed some extra ports along with some extra chassis panels that I removed to see what they did, and it turns out that these are all for the resin pump, which is an optional extra for these machines. Personally, I don't find these very useful because it takes forever to just fill and empty a tank, and it's much easier to just pour resin in and out. But in saying that, with a vat this size, I can see the helpfulness in having a pump to remove the majority when cleaning it out, because even with the handles, I can see it being unwieldy to try and keep this all balanced, so that extra certainly has a beneficial function in this regard. And I must admit, I also like that they make this a separate optional product. It means you aren't paying for it if you don't feel you need it. And my hope is that future frozen printers, all future frozen printers, allow for this optional integration too. The other panel at the back of this printer is to allow you to hook up to a ventilation hose if you have the ability. It's a nice inclusion that certainly puts this printer in the consideration column for more professional users, and to be honest, all printers should come with this as an option. Onto the mechanics, and what's super great is that this printer has a large ball screw powering the Z-axis, which generally means smoother motion, and this is incredibly handy when we consider how fast this thing can print. Now for this review, I used Frozen's 8K resin, which isn't the fastest resin out there, but coupled with an ACF release film, I can lift just that little bit faster than with PFA. Now when it comes to speed, all the brands are reporting absolutely useless info on their websites about what the metrics are. Elegoo with their 150 millimeters an hour on the Saturn III Ultra, or Anycubic with their 105 millimeters an hour on their M5S. Yeah, that's great guys, but what's the layer height? What resin? Frozen tells us 600 layers an hour, and yeah, that's a little bit more useful, but what's the lift height you're using for those layers? You know what would be useful, guys? Just give us the minimum and maximum lift speeds that your motor is capable of. I mean, the speed of prints are more limited by the resins we use anyway. All I want to know is the maximum range I can enter into Chitu Box relative to how fast this printer can perform. Then I'll know if its minimum speed is too fast for more detailed resins, or the fastest speeds are too slow for my fastest resins.
every brand out there should state this instead of trying to one-up each other by changing the way it's stated on different websites and different printers. Now speaking of Chitu box, that's the slicer that comes with this, and it's not just the basic version. You get a card in the box for a full 12-month license of Chitu box Pro, which on its own is worth $170. And I hope unless you're brand new that Chitu Box needs no introduction. It's one of the top resin slicers and it's still pretty much the only one I use when it comes to actually slicing files. The Pro version has a different and arguably more complicated UI, but it also boasts a ton of extra features like better supports, better island detection and other general part processing tools. It won't take long for you to get to grips with the alternative UI if you're used to BASIC, as it's still very similar, but yeah, this is clearly better in a myriad of ways, and I'll be honest, it's going to be hard for me to go back now. And the final feature I want to talk about on this printer is the UI. Compared to what Frozen has given us before with the likes of the Mighty 8K, this one's relatively BASIC. All of the functions you need are there, printing files, Z control and VAT cleaning being the main ones, and you even have the functions for the resin pump in here too, just make sure that these functions are turned off if you don't have that device. It is fairly attractive with big buttons that are easy to press on a non-capacitive screen, but with this being a more budget-friendly printer, it is, as I said, basic. And that means there's no network functions, no ethernet, no Wi-Fi, and there's no internal memory which would allow you to add these functions later. And despite everything else here being awesome, network functionality on 3D printers has somewhat become a standard. And I'm sorry, but I do feel that any printer, and especially one at this price point without that as an option, is a missed opportunity. I mean, just the size and style of this resin printer is likely more suited to larger printing companies who mass produce things than the typical hobbyist home user anyway. But saying that, let's look at print quality. I left this printer at the default 50 micron layer height as that's close enough to the 43 microns of the XY pixel size, and I've not applied any anti-aliasing throughout these tests. And to prove this was a balanced exposure, I've also got the cones of calibration test which shows all successes on the success side and fails on the fail side. Now, my initial flat exposure test shows 13 holes and 13 posts, which is pretty equivalent to 10 inch 8K printers, most of them anyway. But more accurately, when we look at the bottom section of this test, we can see that it struggles to render fine lines and also fills in several gaps, which proves some small lack of sharp detail from this printer. Now, on models like the Wolverine bust from Drafnir Studios that I always print, does this look bad? Hardly. It's only when zooming in and using a macro lens that you see some slight voxelization in the eyes, but without anti-aliasing, you'd still get some voxelization of the 22 microns on the Sonic Mini 8K. When zooming into miniatures like this Dredge Marine by Mezgeik, you can see voxelization on the surface and layer lines on top. A better example is this bust I created using a scan of my head and some parts from Atlan Forge. The abdominal part of the armor shows heavy voxelization. But remember, this is without anti-aliasing, and when you zoom out, these models have rendered all of the key details incredibly well. Print your miniatures with 30 micron layers instead of the 50 I've done, slap anti-aliasing on these, and just like I've said about 6 inch 2K printers, these are still more than passable quality. They're actually very good quality prints. They're not out the box as smooth as smaller 8K or 12K printers. But I'm sure many of us would still say they're more than good enough. And you can get so much on this build plate that, well, the question is, what's worth more to you? Detail or more printed in one go? Because the detail difference is tiny. But yeah, this kind of product is honestly made for those people with larger prints in mind. And I was able to use mine to print a full-size Katana replica, which is from Blackforge Games. And I've said before, I do. I love everything Blackforge do. And this Tenjin Katana is extra cool because it lets you have two blade options and two Suba options to use as you like. So now to make that point again, I said in the intro, when printing something at this scale, does that tiny surface quality even matter? With enough spray paint, you can remove layer lines from FDM prints with 0.2 millimeter layer heights. So prints on this will be incredible. So yeah, if you're someone out there looking to print resin quality larger models, this printer is a no-brainer. It's well built, and despite the basic feature set, it's been done in such a way that gives you a tidy and consistent package. And I've no doubt that this will be a unit that lives up to Frozen's quality record, and that's one that they've earned over the last half decade. 
I want to say thanks for watching and thanks to our members whose names are up in the credits now. They get early access to videos like this, priority comment replies and exclusive videos too. So please consider joining them by clicking the join button down below this video. Whilst you're clicking stuff though, it'll cost you nothing to just click subscribe, click the like button and even leave a comment. Any comment will do. It'll help boost the algorithm and let more people know about this video and hopefully it's helpful to them too. So until next time, May the force be with you. See you guys. Fohammer out.